This is some work done by Ag Canada, Le uh, Lethbridge and Lacombe. Uh, just looking at the invigor, you can see over years, the environment played quite a role in the percent of seed making plants. But there's 40%, or a little over 40% in 98. Lethbridge, for some reason or other, uh, the invigor didn't do too well, just due to environmental conditions that they have. But on average, we always find the, the hybrid seed is going to give you more plants for square, uh, well, percent of seed making plants. Uh, let's skip that one. We go to low, real low plant densities, we have increased logic. <coughs> you know why? Because the plant will produce a whole bunch of secondary branches from the base. And those branches are always weaker. Plus you have a huge open area when you get to two plants per square foot. And the weeds are an issue. So even though you spray them out, they're still, it's still going to be an issue later on. You'll have flushing. Delayed maturity by 10 days on a low density. Uh, and of course, those weed seeds are going to be in there for dogs. Uh, under drought conditions, however, we want to be at that lower end. These are the yields of three different <coughs> sites under drought conditions where we were at very low densities, uh, two to four plants per square foot. And as we see the plant competition, as you start getting over here to 14 plants per square foot, you start seeing a drop off in yield. So yeah, water is important. Uh, the effect, uh, as a, again, just an example, this is research work at Lacombe, and they were seeding up to 200 seeds per square meter, which is at 6.3 on the uh, open pollinated, 9.9 .9 on the uh, <coughs> hybrid bear variety, and you can see what happened. But no real difference there, was there? No, well, that looks like a bit of a drop off in the 100, but no. Statistically, it's not a significant factor. I like to use this. We did a, a huge amount of research work that I was involved with. The first eight years of work on seed vigor, all it did was create more questions than answers. And I had a lot of seed samples out of the Peace River block that we put into, those, into that research work. And Dr. Bob Elliott took over the program and did another five years of research work. And he came up with this very, very simple little index. And I said, well, that's too simple. It won't work. <laughs> and it does. I've got a lot of really good feedback on this from growers. And all it is is here's the index, 1,000 kernel weight times final germination divided by 100. And so if you've got 4 gram seed, which would be average for a lot of your hybrids, 90% uh, final germination. Most of our certified seed is in that range, and it gives me an index of 3.6. And his research work has shown that hybrids should be 3.5 to 4.5. So if you, you bought a new batch of seed, uh, get your 1,000 kernel weight done, take a look at the uh, official germination on it, and I'll tell you real quick. If it's an open pollinator, which always are a much smaller seed, they should be, have an index of three. The reason it's important is their research work has shown even a one unit increase is going to increase the plant growth by 20 to 50%. That's leaf area index we're talking about. That's the manufacturing base of the plant. And in most cases, that is going to give you a yield increase. Uh, seed size, <laughs> yeah. this is just an example. This is the same variety. All we did was screen up different uh, seed sizes. And you can see what happens with your larger seed size. Dry matter content is a very significant difference versus the small, very small seed at 35 days after seeding. We saw a major difference there. And we saw it at the yield end too. Uh, we're starting to look at about a 20%, over 20% increase in yield with that larger seed size. Uh, green seed uh, is an issue, and no one looks at it. <coughs> I'd love to have you do a crush strip on your seed lot. If you've got a high percent green in there, 
I wouldn't use, I wouldn't use it. What it's telling me is those seeds didn't finish properly. Because uh, finish, when that, that seed has put down all the oil and protein that it's going to need, and you still have chlorophyll in it, it's telling me it didn't make it to the level it should have. And we've had disasters out there. Cargill, it cost them about $2 million one year because they were doing their seed multiplication down in Southern California on irrigation. And they had a real problem. Uh, high temperatures when it was filling up because it was growing as a winter crop. And they were starting to hit 40 degrees as that seed was filling. And so their oil content was about 5-6% lower than it should have been. And that meant it did not have the vigor that they need because oil <coughs> drives germination. Oil is the energy source the seed has to have to get out of the ground. And you can see, this, is, this would be a Canada number one going into the elevator crushing plant. And you can even see there, there's really little difference between those. But as soon as we get over that Canada one, we start seeing a drop off in the percent of seed making plants. It doesn't look like a lot, but it's significant when you're trying to target a proper plant density. Wouldn't those green, uh, green plants, uh, your vigor and uh, germination, wouldn't that affect them? No, no, it doesn't, because you will have very good germination on a green seed. It just doesn't have the vigor that it needs to get up out of the ground. So your percent of seed making plants is much, much lower. And they're under stress if they do make it through. They're growing slower. Uh, this is just showing some of the yield impact. Look at once we get into that medium to high level of chlorophyll in there, we're a uh, fairly significant drop in yield. Uh, growing degree days is the same variety growing across Western Canada. I just threw it in. But you can see Alberta up here at the 110 to 120 days. That's not, a, not abnormal. You were under drought, so it was early last year. But when we have good growing conditions with adequate moisture, uh, yeah, we've got to really watch our maturity and we've got to start looking at seeding earlier than we've ever seeded before. Uh, most people wait until we get higher soil temperatures. I recommend not doing it. Lacombe is very similar to here. You start looking at the base to maturity over here. Here's uh, Fort V, and here's Lacombe, and here's Beagle Lodge. Uh, very, very close. And I've got a lot of our clients in that central Alberta area around Lacombe, Red Deer, up through to Edmonton on the west of Highway 2 uh, to start looking at 2 degrees Celsius as a starting point for seeding. Now, if that happens in April, I tell no. <laughs> uh, but if it happens at the end of April, early May, I'd say go because we're in a warming trip. It's going to take longer to come out of the ground, so you've got to be really careful on your seeding depth and your seeding speed and how much fertilizer goes with that seed, just to reduce the potential of stress. Uh, looking at seeding date effects, here's a piece of block, and you can see our highest yields on average out of all these years of research work came from the earliest seeding date. Yeah, we're going to have a little blow up once in a while with a major, major frost. If we start seeding at plus two, we probably have minus two or five at night. Oh, absolutely. And what does that do to it? Uh, you're going to condition the plant once it does emerge. It's going to be very cold tolerant. I've seen minus 11 for four hours and those seedlings survived when it's growing in very cool condition. Now, if it's growing where you've got higher temperatures, uh, minus three will take out the canola. Because you've got differences in cell size, you've got a much higher, uh, when it's growing rapidly, you've got much larger cells with a higher water content. So when you do have a minor frost, it will actually cause uh, crystallization within the cell, breaking the cell membrane, and then you've got a lot of damage done to it. Uh, this just gives you an idea of what happens. This is work at Beaver Lodge. 
And so you say <laughs> to me, minus two, you're, you're going to shake your head. I always look at 50% germination. Look at that. Here's our 50%. It's going to take about 13, 14 days for emergence. But it is conditioned. It will be cold tolerant. You get up into this range where you've got 50% in three to five days for emergence. And when do our major frosts hit us? Third week of May, that's the one that does the most damage. And everything seems to be growing rather rapidly. Even the ones that are conditioned have lost that capability. But not much different. Watch your death. Oh, man. Yeah, canola will emerge from three inches. <laughs> how much? <laughs> Not very how much. That is three inches deep. Uh, it, is a, it is important. Depth is very critical. Uh, research work done at Beaver Lodge and at Fort B. Uh, we are looking at optimum seeding depth of a half to one inch, maximum. Uh, as soon as we got a little bit lower, we saw that seed to plant ratio just drop right off. We saw reduced root seedling growth. We saw a major reduction in leaf area index up to elongation. And that affects yields dramatically. Delayed maturity. Uh, seedling diseases, I said, is the key reason we don't get seed making plants. Those plants are under stress, they're growing very slowly. All of the organisms that attack the plants are weak organisms. So if you've got a rapidly growing plant, uh, it's not going to affect it very much. If you've got a plant under stress, it's going to take it out. Uh, and of course, the yield in. Here's the data from all those research studies. Even at one inch, we saw a drop from the half inch level. But look at three inches. We're looking at plants per square meter here. We're down to uh, three plants per square meter. <laughs> and that's what the plants look like when you start getting into that three inch depth. They're under stress. They're under stress and they don't recover very easily once they hit the surface. It's utilizing all of its nutrients and energy source out of the sea to make the plant, and uh, until it emerges, it doesn't have anything else. Once it gets emerged, then it starts to use photosynthesis to create sugars and grow rapidly, so you can see the differences in leaf size. And that's critical at the early stage. We want as much early leaf growth as we can get. <laughs> and those are the diseases I mentioned, that's what they look like. Actually, this is taking them to peace. <laughs> and on gray wooded soil, we see a difference. Here, here's a, a half inch versus an inch. Here's 13 days percent emergence on a half inch. Now, the big problem with a half inch up here is we can have those plants stranded, count, especially under tillage. You get that half inch depth, there is not enough moisture there to start the germination process in a, in a reasonable fashion. It has to keep absorbing water until it's got 45% of its weight to get that whole, that it triggers the gene that starts the germination process. Um, this is average, I don't know, there we go, 